Okay, well, and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some cost minimization problems that were from the second problem set. And so I'm gonna go through cost minimization with Cobb Douglas technology, uh, perfect subs, and then, well, I'll see where, so I'll see where we stop. All right, so Anne goes into the donut business for $500 per month and can rent a bakery complete with all the equipment necessary for Anne to make a dozen different kinds of donuts. Rental rate or capital level is one, rental rate of capital is 500. Anne has to pay donut workers a monthly salary of 400 each and then projects monthly production function to be Q is equal to 5LK. This is Cobb Douglas, right? Where Q is tons of donuts. With the current level of capital, what's the marginal product of labor? That's DQ DL. So DQ DL is going to be 5K, right? DQ DL is 5K. Oh, but we want the current level of capital, so let's evaluate at k is equal to one, right? So marginal product of labor is 5k, and then this vertical bar, k equal one, tells us we're evaluating this at a level of capital equal to one, so this is gonna give us five, right? Uh, so this is constant, um, it's constant marginal product. It's not diminishing because it's just a constant, it's just five. Anne wishes to make 25 tons of donuts. How many bakers are required given this level of capital? Well. So 25 is the output is equal to 5L, it requires L of uh, 5, right? 25 LK, K is equal to one, so L is equal to five. All right, derive Ann's short run cost function if capital is equal to one. How much will it cost to produce those 25 tons of donuts? What's the total cost? Okay, so we know output is equal to 5L and because K is equal to one, all right. Um, we also know that the wage is gonna be 400 times the amount of L, right, amount, of, amount of labor, then we know what's happening with capital. I mean, like our input cost together, it's gonna to be WL, so five times 400 plus one times 500, gives us 2,500. 2, so this gives us our costs. Uh, we can write the cost as a function of quantity as well. So to get the cost function, get cost as a function of quantity. Well, I'm gonna say, well, let's take a look at this. We have L is equal to Q over five. Okay, that's this. We know our costs are gonna be W times L. We know this W is 400. So let's write this as 400 times Q over five. And if we do this, we have L times 400, Q over five times 400, and we have cost is equal, cost from labor is gonna be 80 times Q. So that's where this came from. What's this 500 from? That was just our fixed costs, right? That's just still K is equal to one times the rent, which is 500, right? So that's where this cost function of 80Q came from. We're just replacing L with Q over five and W with 400. That's this work right here. Okay, drive the marginal cost curve, but well, that's easy. Uh, let's take the derivative. So marginal cost is gonna be 80. The next thing we have to do is show the relationship between marginal cost and marginal product of labor. Well, the marginal product was five, right? We had that from before. It's constant marginal cost of five. Our marginal cost is 80. I wrote this as 800. Marginal cost is gonna be 80. The relationship between marginal cost and marginal product, MC is equal to W over MP. Uh, That's that just true by definition. And here we have MC, 80 is equal to W over MP, 400 over five. Right? The marginal product is constant and marginal cost is constant as well. Remember, our cost curves come from our production technology. Now suppose Anne's in the long run technology, or long run technology, long run scenario. How much labor and capital will Anne need to optimally produce 25 tons of donuts? Well, our starting point is our Cobb Douglas technology. F of LK is equal to 5LK. Marginal product of labor is 5K. Marginal product of capital is 5L. Their ratio, the fives cancel, we get K over L versus the ratio of our ISO cost, or slope over ISO cost, ratio of our factor prices, 400 divided by 500. Solving for L, we get L is equal to 5 fourths K. Then substituting into my production technology, knowing that we want to produce 25 units of output, right? This is Q is equal to 5 LK, but I replaced L with 5 fourths K, right? And then solving, we find four is equal to K squared, or, um, Four is equal to k squared, yep. So k is equal to two. If k is equal to two, what's what's L? L is gonna be 2.5, right? So the other thing you could do is you could have substituted for the other factor, and that's what I showed here as well. All right, continue to suppose Anne is in a long run scenario. How much will it cost Anne to produce 25 tons of donuts? 
So C of L, K, is going to be 400 times 2.5. This is the amount of labor. Plus 500 times 2, that's the amount of capital. So it's 2,000. Explain the difference. Well, in the long run, and can vary the usage of capital. K equals 1 was not optimal, because in the long run, we want two units of capital. So another factory. Doing so results in economically significant reduction in total costs. Right? We saw the total costs here are 200. Total cost before was uh, 2,500. Okay, here's another Ann donut problem. So now it's $300 per month to rent Ann's bakery, and the wage is going to be 200 Monthly production function is going to be Q is equal to 6LK. So what's the margin of product of labor? 6, right? Take the derivative with respect to labor. Uh, margin of product of labor, take the derivative with respect to labor, and then evaluate at capital of 1. So that's going to be here. I wrote total. I didn't write. This is not. I gestured as though this was the derivative. This is not the derivative. This is total product. Total product is going to be six times L times one for capital. So the total amount of output we get is going to be six times the amount of labor. The derivative is then, you know, take the derivative of this. This gives us six. Okay. It's not diminishing. Clearly, again, it's constant. And wants to make 36 tons of donuts. How many bakers are required? Well, 36 is equal to 6L, we need six bakers. Drive the short run cost function. Well, the first thing, we have our six is our weight, is our number of workers, our 200 is our wage, our one is our, fac our amount of factories, our capital, and then 300 was the cost. So our cost is gonna be 1,500. Alternatively, we can write this in terms of quantity. So how do we do that? Well, Q is equal to 6L. Right, Q is equal to 6L, so L is equal to Q over 6. Oh, well, we can replace 6 workers, this is like specifically labor of 6, with Q over 6 times 200. And that gives us C of Q is equal to 200 divided by 6 times Q, plus 300 is my total cost function. So my marginal cost is going to be 200 over 6. The relationship between marginal cost and marginal product is marginal cost is equal to the wage divided by marginal product. Here, the marginal product was 6. Marginal cost is wage of 200 divided by marginal product, which was 6. All right. Uh, how much in the long run scenario, how much labor and capital does Ann want? So similarly as before, we'd find our, well, we have the same production technology. So the marginal product and marginal product of labor and capital are the same. So our tangency condition, well, at least our marginal rate of technical substitution is still just K over L. We set that equal to the ratio of our factor prices. And if we do that, we end up getting 200 over 300 equals K over L, right? This is ratio of factor prices. This is slope of the ISO cost, 200 divided by 300, that's W over R, is equal to the slope of the ISO quant. This is marginal rate of technical substitution. Then substituting either L equals 1.5K or K equals 2 thirds L, we can solve for the optimal amount of capital and labor. It's two capital and three labor. All right. Continue to suppose and is in the long run. What's the cost? So this is just 200 times the amount of labor plus 300 times the amount of capital, or 1,200. And again, there's lower cost in the long run because now Anne's free to optimize. All right. Suppose the firm's production technology is given by 4 to the half, K to the half. Market wage is 1. Rental rate of capital is 1. Find the cost minimizing bundle when there's 32 units produced. Oh, we did this already. This is in a different video, and I forgot to delete this. So this one's super boring. Um, what do we do? Well, let's take the marginal product of labor, marginal product of capital. The ratio of marginal product of labor to marginal product of capital is K over 4, or is it K over L. Set this equal to our ratio of our input prices, that's just one. So our tendency is gonna be K is equal to L. Plug this into our production technology and solve. Sure enough, we find we want L and K equal to equal to eight. Minimum cost to produce is gonna be one, eight, one times eight plus one times eight, it's just 16. Is this long run or short run? It's long run because all factors are free to vary. All right, suppose and or suppose the firm wants to produce 30 units as cheaply as possible using only labor and capital with the following production technology. So this is perfect subs. Here's a prevailing market wage, five per hour. We want to find the rental rate of capital. All right, well, the first thing, whenever you have a perfect subs problem, is I would find the marginal rate of technical substitution. It's one half, right? It's the coefficient on 
labor and the coefficient divided by the coefficient on capital. So it's going to be one half as my marginal rate of technical substitution. And then I'm going to compare that to my slope of my ISO cost. So that's going to be 5 over R. All right, in question or part A, we have 10 workers and 10 machines. That's an interior solution because we're using some of both. That can only happen if the slope of the ISO quant is equal to the slope of the ISO cost. So this requires, this happens when 5 over R is equal to a half, so R has to be 10. So then cost is minimized with any combination of labor and capital that's going to be enough to produce those 30 units. And indeed, here we would have 5 times 10 plus 10 times 10 gives us 30 units of output and costs $150. Suppose it currently costs $150 to produce these 30 units. We want to find what's the smallest possible price so that the firm is using only capital. It's using capital. All right, the firm's, oh, sorry, what's the, what's, the small, what's the smallest possible price of using capital the firm could be using given this fact? Okay, so the firm's going to be optimizing either by using labor or using some combination of labor and capital where the total cost is equal to 150. Either way, um, rental rate of capital is going to be bigger than 10. So what happens, if we're, what happens if we're using only capital? Well, to get those 30 units of output, we would need 15 units of capital. 15, 150 divided by 15 gives us our 10 for R. OK, good. Um, what are we saying here? Uh, to be able to, so we want to be able to producing. Um, uh, so yeah, if so, this question saying what what's making this problem work is if the rental rate of capital is smaller than ten, then let's see, we would be producing. Um, then then the rest of it wouldn't uh, rest of it wouldn't fit. All right, suppose the rental rate of capital falls to be strictly less than what you found, so strictly less than ten. Let's find the. Let's find the largest amount the cost minimizing firm would be using or paying to produce those 30 units, assuming it's still optimizing after reducing R. So here's their picture. So suppose the rental rate of capital falls, goes below 10. And so now what's happened? Well, we'll compare our slope of our ISO cost to our slope of our ISO quant. Slope of our ISO cost is W over R compared to our ISO quant, which is um, uh, 1 half. So if the ISO costs are steeper, if the ISO costs are if the ISO costs are steeper, then we would produce using only capital. That's this picture. This is our alley solution. So this should shift the firm's production function to be using only capital, 15 units of capital. We know then cost is going to be rental rate of capital times the amount of capital. However, if it was the case that R was smaller than 10, then 15 times the rental rate of capital is going to be something smaller than 150. Why is the 15 relevant? Well, from above, we found that we'd need to use 15 units of capital to get 150 or to get our 30 units. And then that's only going to happen if the price of capital is smaller than 10, but then the cost to produce is less than 150. So that's what makes this, uh, that's what, make that work, what makes this work. All right, suppose the firm is willing to produce 24 units as cheaply as possible using only labor and capital with the same production technology. So the marginal rate of technical substitution is the coefficient on labor divided by the coefficient on capital. So one divided by two is one half. Prevailing market wage is $3. So we want to find the rental rate of capital. So in the first one, suppose we are using eight workers and eight machines to produce output. Well, this is a perfect subs problem. When would we be optimizing by using some of both? only if we have an interior solution. So this is a situation where the slope of the ISO costs are exactly, co are exactly equal to the slope of the ISO quant. So one of our lowest possible ISO cost is coincident with our ISO quant. And then any combination of labor and capital works. So that's my combination here, or it's my combination. It's my solution here. There's an interior solution. We have labor and capital entering the production process as subs. So we know the interior solution is only possible if the slope of the ISO cost is equal to the slope of the ISO quant. So our expression is going to be 3 over R is equal to 1 half, or R is equal to 6. Cost is minimized with any combination that's sufficient to give us those 24 units. Here in particular, it's going to be 24 plus um, 48 gives us our um, gives us our 72 units. Suppose it, or $72. Suppose it currently costs $72 to produce those 24 units of output. So what's the smallest price to use capital the firm could be 
uh, facing given the information. So to do this, the firm is either optimizing using labor, so 24 units of labor, which is then uh, which is then costing 24 times three. It's our um, it's our cost, and then or it's using some combination of labor and capital, so the total cost is 72. Either way, let's see. We have our uh, our our rental rate of capital has to be six or bigger. All right. Suppose the rental rate of capital drops, falls to be strictly less than the bound you found. What's the minimum? What's the largest possible? What's the largest amount the cost minimizing firm would be paying to produce Q is equal to 24, assuming it's still optimizing? All right. So what happens if R is less than if R is less than six? If R is less than six, now our again our ISO costs are steeper than our ISO quant. And so the ISO costs are steeper. It would shift the firm's production to using only capital. That's this picture. Steeper ISO costs, flatter ISO quant. If we use only capital, we're going to use 12 units of capital to be able to get our 24 units of output because our marginal product of capital was 2. Then the cost is going to be something less than $72. All right. So that's what's making part B in all these cases that in both of these that's what's making part or this what that's what is making part B work for this firm to want to use capital. It's got to be the case that the rental rate of capital in this case is smaller than 6 and the previous one is smaller than 10. But if you do that, then the cost to produce that output is going to be less than the 72 we were requiring here and less than the 150 we were requiring in the earlier question. So that's what's that's what's driving the difference between Part B and Part C in all of these. All right, so suppose capital and labor are perfect subs, resulting in a production function of Q is equal to K plus L. Our isoquants are straight lines with a slope of minus one. Yeah, because the marginal product of capital is one, marginal product of labor is one. So um, MPL divided by MPK is just one. Drive the long run total cost function to describe the total, to total cost as a function of output. Okay, well, the firm is always going to hire whichever input is going to be the cheapest. Right? So we have subs. We're either going to hire labor or capital, depending on which is the cheapest. So if it's the case that, especially because their marginal product of each is exactly one, right? that's why we know that they're going to hire whichever is the cheapest. Right? So if the wage is lower than the rental rate of capital, you'll hire workers. If the rental rate of capital is higher than the lower than the wage, you'll hire machines. So that's what this is saying. If the wage is less than the rental rate of capital, then the total cost is just going to come through wage. We're going to hire W times Q to get Q units of output. We would need L units of labor. And then if W is bigger than R, well, total cost is going to come through rental rate of capital times output. Why? Because if we want to get Q units of output, we'll need K units of machines, which costs us K times R. So, and then if wage is equal to rental rate of capital, then you could use any combination. All right. So question 26, here's our production technology. Q is equal to K to the half, L to the half. Wage is equal to two. Rental rate of capital is two. Find the combination of inputs that minimizes the cost to produce 2,000 units and report our total cost. So our minimization problem is going to be minimize the cost. 2L is the expenditure on labor. 2K is the expenditure on capital minus lambda times our production technology. Uh, oops, I'm missing uh, minus, two, minus 2,000. So to actually write this out, this needs to be minus 2,000. Why is that easy to forget? Because <laughs> when you take the derivative, it's then our margin, our derivative with respect to labor is just this top one. This is MPL. Derivative with respect to capital is the bottom one. That's MPK. That's this right here. MPL is this stuff. MPK is this stuff. This is our wage. This is our rental rate of capital. So anyway, dividing through, we're going to have, well, one halves cancel. K to, K to the minus one half divided by K to the half is going to be K in the numerator. L to the one half divided by L to the minus one half is going to be L in the denominator. So K is equal to L. All right, so then we're going to plug this back in to our production technology because we know our we need 2,000 units of output, and we're going to get that by using square root of L times the square root of L because we're substituting L is equal to K. And so we know L is equal to 2,000, K is equal to 2,000 because if this is L, Square root of L times square root of L is just L equals 2,000. Okay, so total cost is going to be 2 times, oops, this should be 2,000. 2 times 
2,000 plus 2 times 2,000. Yeah, so this 8,000 is correct, but this will be 4,000 plus 4,000. All right. Okay, Anne has a factory employing workers and machines using this following Cobb Douglas production technology. Hourly cost of capital is 10. Hourly cost of workers is 4. Write down a Lagrangian. So it's going to be 40 is the expenditure on wage. Here's the expenditure on capital minus the production technology minus the target output. Drive the optimal capital to labor ratio. That's just a fancy way of saying find the tangency condition. So the first order conditions for a Lagrangian are going to be 40 minus L to the minus half, K to the half. Let's just take this partial, so it's going to be 40. 1 half minus lambda L to the minus 1 half, K to the half. Good. And then similarly for the derivative with respect to capital. Combining these, this is 40 divided by 10 is going to be our slope of our ISO costs. This divided by this is going to be our marginal rate of technical substitution. And so we're going to get K over L is equal to 4, meaning the optimal ratio, optimal radio, optimal radio, optimal ratio of capital labor is going to be 4 to 1, right? So the long run output expansion path is K is equal to 4L. That's just saying as we're that's just going to say if we propagate this ratio into the future when we're free, when we're free to vary both labor and capital it's not like we're free to use any amount of labor and capital it's that we can choose our amount of labor and capital but we want to keep them in the same proportion not in the sense of perfect complements but in the sense of this is our optimization path i guess that's the easiest way to say that suppose we want a thousand units how much labor and capital should I employ how much will it cost to produce first order condition or th third first order condition so this was our if we take the derivative of the, of the Lagrangian with respect to the lambda this gives us just the constraint substituting our tangency into our constraint we find a thousand is equal to 2l so l is equal to 500 k is equal to 2 uh, 2000 right 500 times 4 is 2000 total cost is going to be 40 times 500 plus 10 times 2000 which is 40,000 suppose we need to double the amount of pasta Assuming Anne is unable to purchase more capital, it's fixed in the short run, how much will it cost to meet the new production level? All right, so now we're going to go back to our production technology. We're going to say we need 2,000 units, and our production is going to be given by L to the half times 2,000 to the half because we're fixed our capital at 2,000. Solving, we find L has got to be 2,000, and the total costs are going to be 20 times 2,000 plus 10 times 20, 000, or 20 is going to be 100,000. Where did I get L is equal to 2,000? Well, this let's rewrite this as equals, not a minus. So it'll be 2,000. Our output is equal to my production technology evaluated at my optimal level of capital. All right, so this is going to be 2,000. Okay. If we, let's see, what do we want to do? We want to square everything. So I have 2,000 squared is equal to L times 2,000. And then divide through by 2,000. And you'll have 2,000 squared divided by 2,000 is equal to L by itself. That's where you get the L is equal to 2,000 from. Okay. In the long run, Anne's able to produce purchase more capital as well. What's Anne going to want to do? Oh, we know the income, exp or the, we know the expansion. It's going to be, it's going to be given by this right here. K is equal to 4L. All right. So in the long run, the amount of capital will adjust to K is equal to 4L. The amount of labor falls specifically to where 2,000 is equal to 2 times L, or L is equal to 1,000, K is equal to 4,000. The total cost will be given by this right here. Right. All right, and how do we find that? Well, you could take, you could, I mean, we just kind of go back and um, go back and solve the, uh, solve our problem specifically for where we want our output to be not 1,000, but to be 2,000. Okay. Explain why the long run cost, long run situation is different than short run. Well, now they're able to adjust capital in the long run. And so the short run costs are going to be larger because the firm hasn't been able to do what's optimal in the long run. Suppose the production function is given by this right here. Determine the long run capital labor ratio, K over L, if the cost of capital is three times the cost of labor. All right. So we minimize cost by setting marginal rate of technical substitution equal to W over R. Marginal rate of technical substitution is going to be MPL divided by MPK. 
The MPL, well, let's take the partial with respect to labor. This is going to be 1 fourth times 12 is 3. L to the minus 3 fourths, K to the 3 fourths. Then we'll take the partial with respect to K. So it's going to be 3 fourths times 12. So that'll be 36 divided by 4 is 9. And then you'll have L to the fourth times K to the minus 1 fourth. Dividing through, you'll get our um, dividing the marginal product of labor by marginal product of capital, you'll get KOs over 3L. And then we want three times the cost of, uh, if the cost of capital is three times the cost of a unit of labor, we're going to have K over 3L. So L is going to be equal to K. All right, so you might, you might be like, oh, wait a second. How do we know three times the cost of a unit of, capital is three times the cost of a unit of labor? Let's just pick one pair that would work. Suppose capital costs, suppose labor costs one, capital costs three. Three times the amount of labor is the amount of capital, right? So, um, right, so three times the amount of labor is the amount of capital. Okay. And I'll do the innovation ones in the next video. So, all right. Hope this is helpful.